Hey there, welcome to my kitchen. I am so excited about today's video. I'm showing you five of some of my family's all-time favorite no-bake desserts. I love making no-bake desserts for my family just because they are so easy to throw together and they are perfect, especially for this time of year. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump to my kitchen and start cooking. We are beginning today with my all-time favorite creamy peanut butter pie. I have my nine inch ready crust graham cracker crust right here, or you could use a homemade pie crust for this recipe, but I just love the simplicity of this store-bought graham cracker crust. So to my store-bought graham cracker crust, I'm adding three tablespoons of the magic shell fudge, and I'm spreading it out as even as possible. After I'm through with that, I'm going to stick this in my refrigerator to chill while I work on the creamy peanut butter mixture. Over to my electric mixer or you could use a hand mixer or a whisk for this. I just added eight ounces of softened cream cheese with a half a cup of powdered sugar. I'm going to mix this together until it is well combined. Now that it is completely smooth, I'm adding my one cup of creamy peanut butter and a fourth a cup of milk in. Again, you are going to mix this together until it is smooth. This peanut butter pie is so, so easy to make. So now that that is well combined, you are going to fold in your eight ounces of whipped topping. You do wanna make sure you fold it in and it will take you about a minute or two just to get everything mixed together. To the graham cracker crust that we prepared earlier, you're going to add that yummy creamy peanut butter mixture that we just made up right in there and then you're going to chill this in your fridge for at least one hour. After about an hour in the fridge, my pie was completely set, so I topped mine with a little bit of Reese's peanut butter cups on top, peanuts, and chocolate chips. This pie is hands down, like I said previously, my all-time favorite creamy peanut butter pie. It is just so rich and delicious. Now we're making these mega Oreo balls. So to kick these ones off to my blender, I'm adding about 36 Oreo cookies. It's just one regular sized pack. You could also do this in a food processor or just bang the Oreos in a large bag. Now that we have our Oreos super duper fine, I pulled out my medium sized bowl and I'm adding the crushed Oreos right in there along with eight ounces of softened cream cheese. And then with an electric mixer, hand mixer, or a whisk, you are going to mix this all together until everything is well incorporated together. I lined my sheet pan with parchment paper and now with a cookie scoop, I'm just scooping a little bit of that Oreo mixture out and then rolling it into a little ball. After I'm finished with all of our Oreo balls, I'm going to place this in my freezer to chill for about 30 minutes. It's time to begin on the chocolate chips now. In this bowl, I have a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and then a cup of white chocolate chips, or you could use dark chocolate chips, milk chocolate chips, whatever you like. To each of those bowls, I'm adding a tablespoon of coconut oil and then I microwave them on 30 second increments until they were completely melted. After 30 minutes of chilling, I took the Oreo balls out of the freezer and now I'm just dipping them in either the white chocolate or the milk chocolate and then sprinkling a little bit of crushed Oreos on the very top. After I finished all of my Oreo balls, I placed them in my fridge to chill for about an hour. Here they are after an hour. The chocolate on the very outside has hardened and the center of the Oreo balls are smooth and delicious, almost cake-like. These are one of my all-time favorite treats actually. My husband is a massive banana fan, so these banana dream bars are perfect for him. In my little food processor, I'm adding about 20 of these golden Oreos, and I'm just going to process them until they are really fine and crumbly. Mm -hmm. 
I have my eight by eight baking dish right here. We're going to start on the crust now. So I just added the golden Oreo crumbles in along with four tablespoons of melted butter. I'm mixing this all together and then I'm going to press it down with my hands to form a crust. After I'm finished with that, I'm going to stick this in my freezer to chill while I work on the rest of the ingredients. I pulled out my smaller sized bowl and to this bowl I'm adding my three ounce package of instant pudding banana cream mix and then I'm going to be adding a cup and a half of milk to go in there with it and then you will mix this all together until it's smooth. We're going to work on the banana cheesecake mixture now. So to my electric mixer, I just added eight ounces of cream cheese at room temperature. And then in this little bowl, I have one banana that I mashed up. You'll cream these two ingredients together. After it is looking something like this, you'll add in your third a cup of powdered sugar and then a couple teaspoons of vanilla extract. Just mix this together for an additional 30 seconds or so. The last thing we are adding in here is one cup of whipped topping and then fold this together until all of the ingredients are kind of incorporated and it looks smooth. Onto my cutting board, I'm going to be slicing two medium sized bananas into smaller pieces. And then I pulled out the crust that we prepared earlier. And then onto the crust, you're going to place the bananas on the crust on a single layer. The next layer I'm adding on is the cream cheese banana layer. Just add it on and then spread it out evenly. The very next layer we are adding on is the banana pudding layer. Just add it right on there and then spread it out as even as possible. After you are finished with the banana pudding layer, you are going to add about five ounces of whipped topping on the very top. After you're through with that, you're going to put cling wrap on the very top and then place this in the refrigerator to chill for about an hour or two or until it sets up. Here it is out of the fridge, ready to enjoy. I do wanna let you know, I'm not even the biggest banana fan in the world and I absolutely love this. So even if you're not the biggest banana fan in the world, I think you would devour this one. These S'mores Crispy Bars are 100 times better than regular Rice Krispie Treats. So to my 9x13 baking dish, I'm spraying it with plenty of nonstick spray and then I'm going to set it to the side. I pulled out my large measuring cup and I'm going to measure out six and a half cups of Golden Graham cereal. To begin on the Hershey bars, I have three of them right here. They're just the regular milk chocolate bars and I'm going to cut them up into smaller pieces. I like to cut them into the little squares just like this. Over to my larger pot, I'm adding six cups of the mini marshmallows in there. I did have to add a few of the larger marshmallows because I didn't have quite enough, but after I added the marshmallows, I added four tablespoons of sliced butter. I kept this on a lower heat, stirring it pretty consistently until it looked something like this. Over to the golden grams that we measured out earlier, you'll add the marshmallow mixture that we just made up right into them. And then you'll also be adding an additional cup of the mini marshmallows. Stir this all together to get everything coated in the marshmallow butter mixture. I pulled out the greased nine by 13 baking dish and then you'll be adding half of the golden ground mixture that we've just made up right to it. And then a fun little trick that I like to do because this is super duper sticky is I like to spray my hands with a little bit of nonstick spray and then I press down the golden ground mixture to kind of spread it out evenly. So after I'm finished with that, you'll be adding half of the milk chocolate bar that we cut up earlier and then you'll be adding the rest of the golden ground 
crispy mixture on top followed by the rest of the milk chocolate bar. I like to let these sit for about 30 minutes before cutting into them, but these are just like eating a regular s'more. They are so, so good. And I really like how you can make these for a larger amount of people, or you could of course half this recipe for a smaller amount of people. Now we're making my all time favorite ice cream cake. This Buster Bar ice cream cake is out of this world. So to begin in this large gallon size Ziploc bag, I'm adding 16 Oreo cookies in, and then you are going to crush them up. I'm using a rolling pin to crush them, or you could do this in a food processor or blender. However you wanna crush your Oreos, do so now. After you're finished with that, add in a fourth a cup of melted butter and then mix this all together. I'm using a pie dish or you can use an eight by eight baking dish, whatever you prefer for this recipe. After I poured my Oreo cookies on the bottom of my pie dish, I spread them out as even as possible with my hand and I kind of also press them down. For the ice cream, I'm using five cups of vanilla ice cream. My ice cream is definitely softened. I left it out on my countertop about for about 30 minutes before I even started making this recipe, just so it was super easy to spread on the Oreo layer. So now I'm just going to stick this in my freezer to harden. Now we're gonna begin on the chocolate topping. So in my pot, I just added six ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips fourth a cup of butter, one cup of powdered sugar, and six ounces of some evaporated milk. You're gonna cook this on a medium low heat and let everything melt. You do wanna stir this very frequently while this is cooking just to ensure that the chocolate doesn't burn. After it looks like this and it has thickened, you're going to pull it off of the heat and set it on your countertop and let this completely cool down. Once it has completely cooled down, it took mine about an hour, you're going to place some of your dry roasted peanuts on top of the ice cream layer on your cake. I added about a cup of those peanuts just because we really do like peanuts in our home. So on the very top, you're going to add the chocolate saucy mixture and then place this in your freezer to harden for about 30 minutes to an hour, then you are able to enjoy it. Once it was out of the freezer, I just sprinkled it with a little bit of some powdered sugar. And this has to be one of my hands down all time favorite ice cream cakes ever. I love the different layers and it's just so, so good and really simple to throw together. I hope you found a recipe for yourself. And as always, I would really love to have you here. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.